Hello there. I've had my first suggestion, which is awesome. Direct state access. I'd not heard of this before. It was integrated into version 4.5 of OpenGL in 2014 with an ARB extension, which means that it should work on all cards. And I say it should, we'll find out soon enough. First, let's talk about the problems that direct state access tries to solve. If we have a look at our mesh class that we've been using to draw our square and triangle in previous videos, you can see that whenever we want to do anything to a buffer or vertex array object, the VAO, we have to bind it as the active vertex array object. And this happens for the vertex da buffer data object and the index buffer data object too. There can only be one type of buffer object active at once, which is ironic because these buffer objects and vertex array objects are called objects. And in object oriented programming, objects can be accessed easily. OpenGL uses a state system and to access objects, we change the state. We change the state of OpenGL all the time by talking to buffers, vertex array objects, uniform shader programs. Anytime you use GL enable or GL disable, we're changing the state. And the state system is great, but it also has some limitations. Those of you who know what a state machine is may understand this a little bit better, but OpenGL is a little bit different than a standard state machine. Anyway, with buffers, for example, we can only bind one buffer of that type at a time. Now, for those of you smarties, you may be thinking that we can fill the buffer up with lots of different objects with some clever packing of the data. And you can, but it will only be on a single thread. If we could talk to multiple buffers at once, what we could have is multi-threading and filling those buffers much faster, making our program perform much better. Maybe we'll look at this in the future, but for now, we're going to focus on direct state access. What direct state access seems to try and remove is the need to change the state of OpenGL, and there's no need to have an object bound, we can simply access it directly. In my opinion, direct state access also makes OpenGL easier to use because we talk to the objects directly rather than worrying about any binding and unbinding, but we still need to handle the memory and how to translate things and stuff like that. So let's simplify an overview of what direct state access does. With DSA, we can modify the data stored in buffers and vertex array objects with just the name and it frees us up from some restrictions. Now, the best way to understand what it really is, is to use it. So let's go. Hello. So I'm going to do this bit manually because I was going way too fast in my script. So we're going to go to GitHub, doing the usual process of going, oh, go away, going and grabbing the stuff that I've got prepared, obviously. Users, just me, just Lewis even. And then OpenGL template, download as a zip. Extract it when it's downloaded, there we go. Extract here, I think, yeah, extract here because then it, opens, it creates its own folder. Um, we're just gonna load up the solution. Been having problems with Office products today. I wonder if Visual Studio's included in that as well. Right, finally loaded. No idea what's going on with my, project, uh, my stuff today, right. So make sure you click on the OpenGL toolkit on the right, go to source files, and the uh, the main, which is the OpenGL toolkit.cpp. And then up at the top, we just want to change to x86, which changes it to 32 bit. And we're going to run by pressing F5. And this is going to be slow as well, isn't it? It just wants to. There we go. All right, so we've got our blue triangle. Nice. Now, what we want to do is check if we have direct state access. And we do that by writing an if statement after the window's been initialized. We could try it before the window's been initialized. I don't know if it's going to work. But I think I might do it just in case. So if, and then we want gl underscore arb underscore uh, direct underscore state underscore access. And that last bit is all in lowercase and it's going to be red and squiggly because it doesn't actually exist yet. So if that exists, then we're just going to print out to the console. Hello, we have direct state access. And a nice end line on the end just so that we can, you know, keep it nice and tidy. Uh, and then we're just going to copy paste this last bit for else only we do not have direct state access. That's that bit done. So save it and then close it down. Otherwise it's going to get all confused. I'm going to go to uh, Google again. We're just going to search glad GL or GL glad up to you which one. And we're looking for glad dot David with a one dot DE. And that's the loader. And this is the loader we're using to, um, load OpenGL functions basically. So language is C++, specification is OpenGL, GL, API GL version 4.6, and then the profile is core. And then in extensions, just search state and you get the ARB and the EXT. ARB is basically 
Um, well, actually, let's explain the EXT first. This is when it first gets kind of implemented, and some vendors have agreed upon implementing it into their graphics cards kind of uh, workflow, I guess. And ARB basically means that it's going to work with hopefully every single graphics card. It's basically like the EXT is basically the prototype. ARB is the um, the agreed upon kind of finalized version, I think. Um, but they keep both. If ARB doesn't work, then try EXT, but ARB should work. Make sure Generate Loader is the only thing uh, ticked down there, and then click Generate. And what that's going to do is take you to a new page page with Include and Source, and all we're going to do is click Glad.zip, which is going to include these two files anyway. And then if we go to the Downloads, extract them to Glad, because it's uh, inside Glad is the Source and uh, Include. And what you're going to do is just copy that. Right-click Copy. Go to HPGL Template Master, go to Third Party, and then Glad there, and just delete that. So I'm just going to press Shift Delete to permanently delete it, because I don't really care. And then Control v to paste it directly in there. And what that's done is just replace the loader stuff that we've got in there. And if we load up the solution again now, what we'll find is that the GLARB Direct State Axis is now purple. It's no longer squiggly and red, which means that we have it in the loader basically. But we don't know if it's working yet. What we want to do is run it with F5 and we'll check the console afterwards and we'll find out if we have direct state access, which is right at the top there. Hello, we have direct state access. I didn't expect that to work because it's above the window initializing part, which is when Glad actually gets initialized. Um, so just in case, I'm going to put it underneath just in case it's different when it has been initialized. So we'll close that down and load it. That's a, you can click local Windows debugger at the top and it's the same thing as pressing F5. Yeah, so we still have direct state access, which is good. I'm going to save that then and we need to implement this stuff now. Actually, I'll tell you what, I'm just going to go ahead and do it right now. Um, so we've got create mesh there, right click on that, go to the definition and I'm going to tidy this up. So we don't need any of this because this is like if we're using uh, six pieces of data, as you can see, there's three there and three there, and we're only actually using five pieces of data per vertex, the XYZ uh, position and the UV coordinates for textures, even though we're not actually using UV coordinates for textures in a shader. It's just the size of the data. So that's just what the, how that exists. Uh, let's change this bit as well, because this is ugly. So we've got size of a GL float times five, which is basically, uh, so the size of a GL float is four bytes times five is 20. So that's simply 20 in there. And the same thing here. 20. Now this bit's annoying. We got the size of a, of a float times three, so that's 12 bytes, but it has to be a void pointer cast. So we're just going to leave the void pointer cast in there, but it's just simply 12. And that's just to tidy that up so it looks nice and neat. Um, and maybe you're wondering what these are, just in case you don't remember from the vertex array object and uh, all that stuff. We're going to scroll up and have a little look. So to create our, uh, our triangle, we've got the XYZ coordinates for each position that the uh, the triangle kind of points are on the screen and then the UV coordinates for where that texture kind of gets painted, if that makes sense. So we've got the X, Y, Z coordinates and the UV coordinates. Um, and then we've got the list here, which is simply the order in which these vertices are drawn. So zero, one, two here basically draws this vertice, then this vertice, then this vertice. And we get our triangle. And they're actually called vertexes or Vertices is plural, vertex is singular, but I prefer calling them vertices. It's just a it's just a slur really. Let's get rid of these comments as well. And we are set up and ready for the next part, which I'm going to do and then compare both of them in a, in a voiceover because it's much more easier to look at. So let's get on with that. Hello, one last thing I forgot to mention is that I've got some links down here. Um, let's see, which one do I want? I want this one. So there we go. Okay, so yeah, uh, what you want to do then from here, if you want to do it yourself, which I really recommend you do because it's actually really simple. I'm not a wizard. Um, so we've got this link, which I'll put in the description for direct state access. If you scroll down all the way to, we want buffer. Is it this bit? I think it's this bit. It's a bit further down. So just above detailed messages with debug output. This is simply the bit I followed. So here you got, for example, GeoGen vertex arrays, GeoGen buffers. All I simply did for the bit where we um, were changing to use direct state access is 
you got here GL create buffers and then the vertex array object is GL vertex create array, well create vertex arrays. It's very, very simple. All of these functions are very similar to the ones we've got already. You can even see that these take the exact same kind of arguments. One ver so one and then bind the vertex array object. Well, we link the uh, vertex buffer objects there, sorry. And here if we look for the buffers bit. Yeah, you've got one and then vertex buffer data objects. It's very, very similar. I really recommend you try and give it a go uh, before moving on with the video. Um, and if you want any of these other links as well that I've got, because this is where I learned everything about direct state access, you've got some things from Kronos, mostly from Kronos actually, you've got a couple of posts there, then let me know and I'll put the rest of these links in the description as well. This is my favourite one, this uh, multi-threading link, if I quickly show you that because it's hilarious. I'm just going to paste that in here. This is all about multi-threading in OpenGL. You can see how much uh, information Kronos have given us, which is really, really useful. It's annoying sometimes access in their wiki is a bit slow, but yeah, I found this really useful. I'm going to use it in the future when we look at multi-threading in OpenGL and um, uh, and binding, well, basically loading loads of stuff to the buffer. So here you can see multi-threading. There is currently no text on this page, uh, which is really helpful to us. So when we look at multi-threading in OpenGL, then we'll, we'll use this and, uh, and yeah. Should be good. Here's the side by side comparison. Um, the gen functions have changed to create functions. The name is slightly different and it takes in the same kind of information, but with these, uh, this create function, the name becomes the way we talk to these objects. Another thing to note is there are no bind functions either. And to talk to a buffer or vertex array object, we use the names. Now, instead of the buffer data, we have a very similar looking function called GL named storage buffer. This is how we access the buffer now. There's no longer a type, just the name, and everything else is the same apart from the static draw bit on the ends. This is now dynamic storage bit. If you remember from before, static basically means it's never modified, so dynamic means that the data can be modified. So that's the buffers field and stuff. Now for the actual object to be drawn, the vertex array object or VAO. The VAO needs to know the buffer that contains the vertex data. So we use GL vertex array vertex buffer, passing the vertex array object so it knows which vertex array objects we're assigning the buffer to. Zero is the binding index. The binding index is important for if we have multiple objects stored in the buffer. Then we have the vertex buffer data object simply going into this function. And now this vertex buffer data object is attached to the VAO. Zero is the offset this time as there is no other object in this buffer zero is our offset because we just don't have anything else in there if this if we had multiple objects then the offset would be the size of the previous object um, then the stride the strides you'll notice is now stored in this function rather than the in the vertex attributes in the older functions and now because it's an index draw we also have to use indices as well as vertices and we need to bind the index buffer too I say bind, I mean just simply attach the index buffer object to the vertex array object. This one is nice and short though, it's simply GL vertex array element buffer and we just pass in the object and then the index data to the object. Now finally, we have the vertex array attributes. These need some minor changes too. We have to enable these vertex attributes slightly differently because there's no active um, vertex array object. So we use a really similar function here. It's just GL enable vertex array uh, trib, pass the main object that we want the attribute to be activated for, and then the attribute ID, which is zero for us, which is the XYZ uh, coordinates in the shader. And if you remember in the shader, it actually says location zero is the uh, position. Now, how to read the data? We use a GL vertex array attribute format. It is very similar to the older function. Again, we just need to identify the vertex array object and take out the length of the data because this information is now stored in the, in the vertex array vertex buffer. And the best bit about this function is that on the end, we no longer need to use this horrible uh, void pointer cast. It's just a number, which is lovely. Now for the controversial bit. Binding the attributes. There's not supposed to be any binding, I hear you say. Well, GL uh, vertex attribute binding, the vertex array object, then the index, and the index of the object which is related to, I think. This is a bit strange, right? So you've got the object, then the location. So that's going to be either um, zero for the XYZ coordinates or one for the UV data. And then the index is the object that, that that's related to in that buffer. Luckily, we're only using one object, so it's zero. Last thing I did was get rid of all the binding bits down here because we'd make sure we haven't got any um, unbinding going on. And the other thing is that we still need to be able to delete these buffer objects and vertex array objects when this VAO gets deleted, just like we did with, with the standard binding and everything like that. So it all works uh, just as it did before, really. If we run now, it'll be perfectly fine. If it's not, then uh, something's gone wrong somewhere. 
But, um, well, it's it's actually much easier than anything else I've done. There's a bit more t uh, you can do with DSA, though, and it is uh, more of a concept video, really. And you can see that DSA is a nice and easy way to get access to these buffers and vertex array objects, which is really good, in my opinion. It's much easier than binding and unbinding. Well, it almost feels like uh, object-oriented programming rather than uh, whatever OpenGL is. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.